All right, what's up, everybody? This is Sade, aka Little Mario. Sorry about the background, but today I got a little surprise for you. I mean, I got a little treat for you. Today, we're gonna break down all about the nietas. The truth is gonna be heard today, all right? The whole breakdown of the association nieta from New York City, all right? First of all, we're gonna get lit up, you know, because. I'm going to have to be fucked up for this. So much that happened during the 90s. So many lies that are going around. So much bullshit, man, that people don't believe in. And I don't understand why nobody is saying nothing. I haven't seen not even one person yet that get on YouTube or whatever. And stick up for us or for them or whatever. For what we believed in before. I guess everybody forgot. Or they're too embarrassed to talk about it or whatever happened, happened. I see Latin Kings, I give them much respect. My man Warpath, much, much, uh, much uh, respect for you, my brother. Homeboy uh, King Chulo, I watch you also. K Solo, you know. Y'all doing the right thing, bro. You know, keep talking, keep saying your stories. I'm, I'm enjoying it. Now it's my turn. All right. This we're gonna talk about the Nieta. It's not a, a, a Rikers Island story, but you know there's certain things in there that that you know will give you flashbacks of Rikers Island. Right. Just give me one minute. Let me get lit up. I'll be right back. All right. I also want to give a shout out to my homeboy King Class. He's helping me with this. I mean, I'm new to this. Uh, I'm just trying to get my story heard and get the truth out there. Hopefully, you know. All this bullshit, drama, internet bullshit will stop. Um, anyway, let's get busy. I got my dog behind me, so in case, you know, you see anybody lurking behind me, that's my dog. That's my little pit bull. Not little, because she's a, she's a bitch. Where's she at? Where you at, baby? Say hi to everybody. Where you at? No, you can't see her. It's too dark. <laughs> it's too dark. But anyway, like they say, forget about who's telling the story. Just listen to what's being said. So forget about how I look. Just listen to what I'm saying, all right? Give me one minute. All right, let's start. Um, Again, you know... Hopefully, this don't start no drama. You know, I'm not here to start no drama. There's a lot of bullshit going on right now with people starting drama on YouTube. This is just a story, bro. This happened many, many years ago. 91, 92, 93. I mean, this is many years ago. But it's facts and it's the truth. I wrote my story. I'm going to read it to you. So, forget about how I look. Don't even look at the screen. Just listen to what I'm saying. And we're going to get deep, alright? So first I'm going to break down about myself, about my past, so you know about me. And then I'll get into the story, alright? So I'll give you my resume. <laughs> but anyway, I also got other uh, videos up about the LM Posse and why the Nieta stopped repping. Go to my channel, Sade, aka Little Mario. Hit click, like, blah, blah, whatever. I don't even want your money, you know. It's all good. I'm doing this because I want to do it, you know. It's, it makes me happy, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, let's let's do this. All right. So, this is a short story. A story about the rise and fall of the Association Nieta. A.K.A. the New York City Nietas gang from New York City. During the late 1980s. Through the ending of 1990s. First of all, here's a quick resume about my past so that you know that I know what I'm talking about and that this shit is all facts and nothing that was just made up by an inexperienced person who just happened to hear it in the news. As a former street gang member from Sunset Park, Brooklyn, I was part of a group called Los Mafiosos, aka El Posse, during the mid 1980s. Fighting against other street gangs who were bullying and abusing other people around the area. Which I talked about in my other video called LM Posse from Sunset Park. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. Right? 
So basically, I was already in tuned to become a violent person and down to fight anyone, no matter how big you think you are, to protect myself, my family member, or anyone with me I consider family. <laughs> By the time I started getting arrested and going to Rikers Island during the 1980s, early 1990s, from all the TNT raids and the crimes I was committing to survive in the streets, I already heard all about the oppression going on against the Latinos by the Fapasanas, the Muslims, the Jamaicans, and, and why the Latin Kings were formed. So I already... You know, I already knew what to expect, what I needed to do as a Latino if I ever got locked up. So the reason why I became Yeta was because um, during this time, it was first making a name for itself. I seen and experienced all the abuse that was going on by the administration against the minority inmates and with the other inmates getting robbed or setting someone else up to get robbed. Okay, There was a lot of bullshit going on back then. This was like in 90, 91 and all that. A lot of setups were, were going on. All right, How the CEOs would get bored and make bets on which inmates is fighting which. And who will end up getting caught first. And most of the time it was that poor older humble man Don Pedro. Who always said hi to me in Spanish. He didn't know no English. Mira, como esta Mario? Hey, hey. You know. Those are the guys that they were fucking targeting. At first. And most of the times the Latin King would just sit there. Crack jokes and laugh. And I got so fucking mad. I decided to help fight against it. I joined the Nietas. I learned the history. The norms. I gave the Nietas 100% of myself. I became a robot for this gang. Do whatever it took to earn and get respect for my fellow inmates. Shit got so bad with the brothers getting caught sleeping because they only knew Spanish that I also learned how to protect myself and use a small razor. Learned how to tape it up, rip somebody's face wide open without hesitation because that's what they were doing to us. That's what was happening. Just for fun. Just for the joke. So I learned how to become an animal. Doing whatever it took. I learned how to carry it in my mouth. And up my ass. Because that's what needed to be done during that time. When I finally came out of jail, I was I was already on a mission to help unite all the New York City nietas from all five boroughs and the ones coming home. But everything has changed. And now after all the riots, the cuttings, the lies I was told, the betrayals, the suffering I put my family through, after all the blood I shed and... For this organization to find out now we can't represent Nieta in New York because all this time it was running wrong or it got too out of control, this and that and the third. I just gave up. I, I threw up my hands. I retired. Then I started living my life as a family man. I went away, left the gang life. That was 20 years ago, bro. 20 years ago. I'm sharing this story from my experience for the people to finally know the truth about what really happened to the Nietas. The breakdown, how, why it started, why we broke up, etc. Not like it's being told from other gang members who say they wiped us out, that we no longer around. That's bullshit. Y'all putting in more work on neutrals than you did on actual gangsters, all right? I don't have nothing. A lot of people that I know don't have nothing. Kings, nietas, you know what I'm saying? So, let's just keep it real. I hope and pray that no child choose the gang life. Hopefully this story is an example and hit like, <laughs> if you like it. Anyway, I hope you enjoy. That was just a little introduction of myself. 
I did have a lot of experience in this, put in a lot of work. I gave the association 100%, bro. I was in there like, you know, when, when it first came out, you had to be an animal. You had to, all right? Anyway, this is my story right here. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> New York, New York, big city of dreams. The city that I love and hate both at the same time. Trash all over the streets. Abandoned burnt buildings with graffiti on it. The strong smell of piss in the subways. People scared to walk the streets at night. The city was flooded with so much crime and drugs. What we once knew as the city that never sleeps. With its beautiful skylights. The city of dreams. Was now a black cloud of evil, evil smog. The outlaw street gangs from the 1970s, along with the Italian wise guys everyone once seen on the street corners terrorizing the streets, were all now gone. Either dead, locked up, or just lost in the streets. Strung out on drugs, of course. All the breakdancing crews, the graffiti, the roller skating, the, all the disco era, that shit was now all played out. Now you have a lot of new street gangs, crews, outlaws, whatever you want to call it, out there in the corners making money, selling crack, heroin, and others just looking to rob, beat up, stab, or shoot anyone just because the voices in their head made them do it. The older people everyone once respected and look up to such as the wise guys, the shock callers, the OGs, the thugs, were now being treated like shit because they all got hooked on crack, the crack pipe, on the needle, heroin, walking around like zombies, some even dying and catching HIV. Many were being sent away to institutions and prisons for many years. A small group of men would take the city by storm. You heard the story about the Latin kings. You heard the story about the Bloods, the Crips, the Italian Mafia, and many other gangs. Now here's a story about a group that was born in the prisons in Puerto Rico and migrated into the jails and the streets of New York City. This is the true story about the Association Nieta, the Nieta Association, or the Asociación Pro Derecho del Confinado, Nieta, Asociación Nieta, the Association Pro Inmate Rights that started a long time ago in the prisons of Puerto Rico to fight against the violence, the abuse against the other inmates and non-humanitarian living conditions people were forced to live in because the administration treated them like animals, allowing contract killings, Rapes and robberies organized by them. In the nineteen, in the early nineteen nineties, the prisons and the streets of New York were about to be flooded by the same organization. The media talks about how it all started in Puerto Rico as a prison gang. Everyone has read many different stories and versions about the Nietas, about how they first began in New York. I heard it all. That it was because of the Latin kings being bullies to anyone's not running with them. Some say it was a means of protection from the abuse that was going on with the administration. The beatings on the people and the black inmates abusing the Latinos. First of all, here's a background check on the Association Nieta. This is the breakdown. For many years in Puerto Rico, when a person got arrested, he was faced with with a lot of abuse, physical, sexual, and mental. People would get beat up and robbed on a daily basis, and for no reason. Convicts would auction your ass off as you're being processed, which meant once you got inside, you belong to, to someone or everyone. A line of men would be ready to rape you constantly. Family would come to visit and leave you food, clothing, or money. After the visit was over, a group of people would be lined up, talking dirty to your family members, 
and waiting to rob you of all your belongings. They're going to extort you, treat you like shit for the whole time you were there in prison. These kinds of people were called insects, insectos, also better known as Grupo 27, Group 27. The administration were also involved in setting up these horrific events. If you was a tough guy, a wise ass, or refused to do what you were told, they would get paid off by the insects to have you move to an isolated area where you'd be tortured or left for dead. One man stood up and formed a group to stop all the abuse that was going on. He was known as Calo La Sombra, the Shadow, Carlos Torres Eriarte. He gathered all the humble people, everyone who was tired of being abused, taken advantage of. He began speaking about how we have to stop fighting with each other. We have to fight against the corruption and the administration. Fight against all the bullies, people that rob, rape, and violate us in any way, which was Group 27. He was always yelling, Nieta, 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 never tolerate abuse. Now ends the abuse, which came from the Taino Indian language. When a baby was born, they would hold it up in the air and yell in glory, Nieta, three times. Nieta, nieta, nieta. A new baby born, a new baby is born. So now you're a newborn person, you know. You become Nieta, you change your life, you're pure blood now. That was the true meaning of that. Along with the yell, he held up his hands with his fingers crossed and said, De corazón. A meaning of the strong protecting the weak, a sign of brotherhood. The blood you shed is mine too. Your pain is my pain. Together we shall rise up and fight against all these abusers. We have to fight for peace, harmony, and respect. This had all the predators in fear. So an order was given to kill La Sombra. And thinking that if they killed the leader, his followers will fall and it will all be business as usual. On March 30th, 1981, while walking through the basketball court at El Oso Blanco Penitentiary in Puerto Rico, with just a newspaper in his hand, Carlos La Sombra got jumped by a few inmates. They stabbed him a few times and with a gun given to them by the administrators, they shot him dead. Then the riots started. Now you had no choice but to stand up and fight for your rights. You either had to pick up a weapon and fight and fight with it and fight against them or you're going to get killed. There was no, oh, I don't want none. I'm not involved with this. I don't want none to do with it. Uh -uh, there was no excuses. You had to get down. You had to put in work. After months of rioting, they found the man responsible for the order. The leader of the group 27, El Manota, the hand. He thought by locking himself up in solitary, he was safe. So the inmates began banging on the tables, on the walls, and pots and pans as they were singing, you know, singing salsa. They started doing, making a lot of racket, making noise. During that process, they were chipping away the walls in the dining hall until they got into Manota's cell. They broke into it, cut his throat, chopped him into pieces, and sent the pieces to his family and to the administrators. The Imenietas took over that prison and it created a chain reaction all over the island. <sighs> to make it better for the human being and inmate to do his time and go home to his family safe and sound, alive. After the riots, many Nieta prisoners along with the other um, prisoners like the Bentisietes and other infiltrators started being transferred or being released, spreading out everywhere around the country. Some landed in Florida, some in New Jersey, some in New York City. 
During the late 1980s, early 1990s, New York City was recovering from the crack and the heroin wars, the epidemic. A police task force called TNT and Anti-Crime Unit was arresting everyone. The feds were also doing their thing, but they were lurking in the background, waiting for shit to happen, catching someone slipping. That's what they do. They sit around watching all day, listening, letting shit happen for years, until one day, it comes down on you. Then the talk is given about, oh, you're going to face this year, so many years, you're going to get life if you don't testify. That's how they flip you. So anyway, every street hustler, drug dealer, user, stick-up kid, everyone was landing on Rikers Island. You had mixed races. You had black groups, just like the five percenters, the Muslims, the Jamaicans. You had hundreds of drug gangs. That were all rumbling or picking on, oppressing, abusing, getting over on the Latinos, a.k.a. the Germans. They called us that, that, um, they called us that for one because the outlaws, you know, back then they used to wear patches with the swastikas, of course, to mean that they don't give a fuck. And, you know, swastikas was for Germans. And most of all, because how we all stood together, united as a Latino, so tight that they thought it was a racial thing. You know, a Latino comes in dirty, smelling whatever. We used to take care of him, feed him, shower him. You know what I'm saying? Make sure he's good and then, you know, let him go. (laughs) Let him go to the wolves. Now it's your choice who you want to, you know, what you want to do. You know what I'm saying? But we got you toughened up. Now it's your choice. We did that back in the days on Rikers Island, right? As an adult, I wasn't really in C-74 with the adolescents doing that wild, wild thing. But the adults were doing it also. For the adults that were there, y'all could vouch for this. Then you had the administration, the CEOs, the correction officers. These guys were more corrupt than the inmates. Beating up on the people while they were handcuffed. Setting up fights by transferring certain inmates somewhere only to have another group of inmates jump them. Yeah, they, the CEOs, were getting paid for this shit. The only Latinos gang or whatever that was big enough and strong enough to control and not be messed with by, by, by the CEOs or other gangs was the Latin King. You had the outlaws like the rat hunters, but they already have proven themselves that they could stand alone. You know, they've proven that already. Now, the kings have certain rules back then. You had to abide to become a Latin king. For example, you had to be Latino. You know, they were very strict on that back then. You had to be Latino. You had to know how to fight, of course. <laughs> you know, I've been asked a few times, why weren't you a Latin king? I have a story for that, too. I wanted to be straight up. I, I was going to be a Latin king way before this, but something happened. And, you know, I chose Nieta. But anyway, back to this. And, um, of course, you had to learn how to know how to fight. And at that time, you couldn't really get high on so-called hard drugs. You know, like crack or heroin or methadone, etc. But people were still doing it, you know. They they, they did it on the down low. It's all good. <laughs> but the, the most important rule of all that they had was no homosexuals. Again, you've seen it everywhere. You know what I'm saying? You had an undercover booty banger, but, you know, they didn't go for that. Many, many other Latinos, whites and blacks, were being mistreated by the kings because they were... HIV, strung out on drugs, or even gay. They wasn't going for that shit. So, you know, they were like, fuck you, you know. I was there. I witnessed it. So now you have two separate groups of Latinos trying to survive. Have the Latin kings who controlled most of the phones, the television, and any hustle you could think of. And the others. Who were, of course, the ones who were still being abused on, robbed, and taken advantage of. Whatever the situation was. If you wasn't a Latin king, 
than you were on your own. And when the shit hits the fan with the blacks or whatever, most of the time, most of the time, you know what I'm saying? You were by yourself. You know, they looked out for their own. There are many theories to where, I mean, to where, when, and who formed and started the Nietas in New York. A few of the Nietas that came from Puerto Rico were in the New York State Department of Corrections. The two who actually were named as the founders, the godfathers, were called Boy Santana and El Diablo. I met them both, of course. They were noticing all the bad treatments the weaker inmates were getting compared to the stronger muscular Latin kings that no one dare fuck with. Also, they they noticed all the corruption and abuse the Department of Correction were inflicting on inmates. So some sort of, you know, let's just keep it real. Uh, this is probably not the way it happened, but something like this. Okay? Some sort of gathering was formed with all the Latinos, the humble people, somewhere in upstate in an upstate prison, and in a meeting, along with the Latin kings, they were there also, a story was told about the Association Yeta from Puerto Rico and how they fought to stop the abuse from everyone. The strong protect the weak, just like when you cross when we cross our fingers and say they corazón. Uh we have to come from the heart to show our brothers <clears throat> sorry <clears throat> to show all our brothers, weak and strong, some love. To put it in other words, it was said that we must all unite to fight back against anyone who tries to abuse or take advantage of our brothers now. So this is the nietas now, our brothers. You know? There will be no more discriminating. Doesn't matter if you're a drug addict, on methadone, a homosexual, black, white, Chinese, short, tall, sh- whatever. If you came from the heart, And you're ready to die for this shit. And are ready to put in work. And you're tired of this shit. Then you could join us. That was in the beginning. We're not getting into the, you know, what happened afterwards. The foundation was put so now they began writing the history. You had the norms, which is the rules. The nietas live by. How it's all about peace, fighting against the abuse, that we're an association, that we're not a gang, this and that and the third. Uh Uh-huh. And also to respect your fellow gay man. Yep. Respect. Don't consider your fellow man a woman unless he feels like one. We'll get into to that later but in New York you can't just say you're against anything you can't just do this and that and expect people to listen or get some kind of respect or get respected especially a gay person was not something another gangster agreed on that they had to respect nobody agreed on that shit but it was tolerated because they were everywhere you know they were everywhere. There were some Latinos that were gay. I mean, you know, sometimes you felt sorry for them, that you protected them. So now you have to make a name for yourself. You have to set an example, which many of the members, being from the streets, the you know, this is like me and all that, the, the older generation, the people that already put in work, already knew was about to happen. It had to happen. <laughs> It had to happen for the nietas to get that respect they were getting, to to get respected, to get known. Puerto Rico had run it their ways for many years, but certain New Yorkers still didn't understand how to run it yet. They weren't prepared or educated enough to the true meaning of being a nieta and what they was getting into. So without guidance or permission from Puerto Rico, it was formed in New York anyway. With not enough time to educate brothers being released to the streets 
and not using the same concept Carlos La Sombra had in visions, Nietas were hitting the streets, running wild, all bulked up, ready to make a name for themselves, even gays, which later on brought conflict amongst each other and with the Latin kings, and eventually the end of the group's gang's good reputation. You had the older, wiser, more experienced Nieta still upstate prisons or on the streets, but on the down low watching everything that was going on. Not really knowing that there was um, two factions of Nietas running around. You know, they just thought that's the way everybody was running around. One was running around independently, committing crimes, acting like gangbangers. Not being in the chapter, you know, running alone, doing their thing. And the other one was the way Carlos La Sombra had a vision. Many younger, non-experienced new members were now being paroled. Non-experienced. Hit in the streets with one thing on their mind. Make money. Soon the old crack gangs... On the street corners, well, um, from the street corners, soon all the old. <laughs> let me start a little. Soon the old crack gangs on the street corners were all getting locked up. They all started getting locked up, but then, after doing their time, they were all coming out, either as nietas or Latin kings. So now everybody was a nieta or a Latin king. It was that quick of a transformation on the streets of New York. Now, no felon can get a good job. You know, you can't come out of prison and, yo, I'm going to start a new Latin. You know, back then you couldn't do what they do now. So, they go back to what they know best. Fast money. That's when the shit really hit the fan. Right? That's when the shit really hit the fans. Now, to identify themselves, the Latin kings wore black and gold beads. The Nieta had more of a religious type of chain. They wore the whites with the seven blacks and the one red and a cross. Similar to a rosary. I got mine somewhere. I put it away. Everyone would yell out their group. To show there was in the building. Yeah, you had Latin King saying, I'm all the rey. You had the Nieta, Asasacion Nieta. <laughs> I mean, those were the days. You now have Latino groups outnumbering the blacks. Eventually, the cycle began again with everyone getting arrested for drugs, committing violence, and ended back on Rikers Island, demanding control. So everybody's fighting for control now. For years, the Latin kings, the five percenters, and the mothers all ran the phones, the TV, the yard, etc. At first, there were conflicts with the kings, but nothing major. There was a superior gang then. But of course, some certain knucklehead nietas wanted in on it too. So to show and prove that they have the that they had the strength to be respected, to stand alone against anyone. Some inmates, without getting the green light or permission, took it upon themselves to move on the phone time, on TV time, etc. Extorting people. Taking shit on the hustle or not paying back. Beating up on non-compliant blacks that they didn't want to comply. This was not part of the rules, but it was done to make a point. It had to be done. Which meant that the blacks will lose some privileges. After a few arguments and fights and intimidations, Nietas ran most of the phone time. New York City jails were now flooded with Latinos. Nietas and Latin Kings ran shit. That's it. Now the Bing which was solitary, a.k.a. 
OBCC was being built because of all the violence going on. You know, HDM was getting too full. This brought about the birth of the East Coast Bloods. It was C95. I know. I, <laughs> I was a C95 about this time, July uh, 1993. Now, over in C73, in one main, a bunch of blacks were in a cipher, you know, talking. Planning their attack, I guess. Um, it was a time with OG Mag, Dead Eye, CK, and others that they formed the Blood Organization, the UBN, the United Blood Nation. They were planning an attack against the Latinos in an all-out war with razors, with knives that would leave hundreds of blacks, whites, and Latinos. A lot of neutrals. <laughs> Scarred for life. It was a scary scene. Walk in the hallways. All you see are inmates running. Yelling. yelling red light, green light. One, two, three. Slicing everyone in their way. It got to a point. The Nietas and the Latin Kings united together as cousins to fight against this new gang. Trying to take over. Cutting people in random. I mean, they were going all out. I give it to them, you know. Along with fighting against the correction officers. This was happening all over the island. It was a green light on any black person. No matter if a correction officer was there or not. You was not safe. You were going to get hit. Sanitation workers were busy cleaning blood from the walls, the floors, the Everywhere. Alarms going off constantly. It was a madhouse in those days. Soon many guys were coming back home with the memories of what was occurring inside the walls. So we're angry. So we're all scarred up. Filled with revenge on their minds. They didn't have nothing to do with it. They weren't nietas. They weren't kings. The Nieta concept rules were now being run differently. You have the original concept about being peaceful against abuse, helping out inmates, live by the rules, not running as a gang, but as a normal human being, being changed. To another concept. So you have people now. Using Nieta as a cover up to sell drugs. To do criminal acts. And to start drama. A lot of those guys were caught. They were dealt with. And are no longer part of the association. And some were re-educated. They were reunited. So now. You have everybody on the same page. Running the same way. Now, to be a true nieta, you had to understand the rules. You had to understand the norms. A lot of people didn't understand the true meaning of the norms. It's easy to follow in prison because you, um, you're closed in and everyone's always watching. So it's easy to follow them. Oh, them rules? Whatever. I can follow that. But how can a person live in the streets... And survive if you have to live by these rules. That's why it was confusing for some. And they got dealt with. I got dealt with a lot. Because I had to break a lot of rules. You know. Here's an example. The first rule. It says do not steal. Okay you say. We can't take what's not ours. You know we can't rob nobody. Blah, blah, blah. Don't be slick. Don't play head games. Don't play mind games. Don't call anyone a motherfucker. A cocksucker. Etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, okay. And he, in prison is easy because everyone is doing it. Everybody's following the rules. And somebody's always watching. But now in the streets, every I mean, sometimes I gotta put a gun to somebody's face and take their shit because I'm cold, I'm hungry, I'm homeless, and I gotta eat. I don't have a job. So I have to steal. You know, it was called survival. 
Many other rules have been broken in the streets to survive also. This brought mixed reaction from everyone. Guys coming out of prison were now wanting to run alone because a lot of the younger guys were joining and never been to jail. Of course, you had a lot of that. They've never been to jail. But you're in Yeta and it's a prison gang. You had a lot of 16 year olds, guys, girls, and a bunch of gays. Along with a lot of different races that were now joining for protection. Alright? This shit, they were just joining for protection. You, you, you put them in a fight, motherfuckers will run on you. <laughs> a lot of shit was going on and they were just recruiting like crazy. Because they wanted the numbers to go up. Whoopee. You got 50 fucking sheep. Two fucking lions. Didn't work out, bro. And they didn't even know the norms, the concept, the true meaning of being a nieta. They didn't know, you know, none of that shit that was going on inside. Now, you still had chapters being run by anybody. Just saying that they were nietas. They were wearing beads, hankies. They didn't know English at all. Only Spanish. <laughs> you know? They were young, inexperienced. Never been to jail. Many in relationship with each other. So you had um, a guy and a girl, you know. You're nieta, I'm nieta, let's get together. Then you also had men and men getting together. Because it was allowed. You know? <laughs> that shit got sickening, bro. <laughs> She gets me mad just talking about it. Many of the older guys said that they were running alone. And the main people in Puerto Rico, along with Madrina, Manolo, and other high-ranking members were getting really upset. So that's when the Junta Central was formed. The Central Committee. I was part of the Manhattan Division. The Harlem Tribe. A.K.A. Junta de Disciplina. Okay? We began shutting shit down. We got the word. We shut shit down. The media wants you to hear what they want you to hear. And believe all the negative things gangs do. Hmm? They just started making up shit. You know? Certain changes were made, right? No more running around the streets wearing beads, saying that you're a nieta. And not having a slightest idea what the fuck it's all about. Some try to get brave, say, oh, you can't tell us what to do, and got disciplined right there. And got kicked out the whip. So they got fucked up and got kicked out the whip. That's right. We were going after our own. It had to happen, bro. A lot of phoniness, a lot of fake shit going on to something that we bled for and we shed blood for and people were taking it as a joke. Okay? I'm going to break it down a little for you how a person became a nieta, okay? If you didn't know. First of all, you know, all that about you had to prove yourself, be loyal and trustworthy, of course. That you can live in peace and harmony, make sure that you're a humble warrior, etc. Then you're on a 30-day probation. The person who vows for you, responsible for you, does a street background, and a jail check is made on you, of course. They want to make sure you're not a child molester, you're not a woman abuser, you're not a snitch. They wasn't really doing it, but you know, at first, yes, they were. <laughs> Lots of questions being asked to you, you know, if you're a real person, you know, how is Nieta going to change your life? Then you have to learn about the Nieta history, the norms, how to act, how to carry yourself. And if you're passing, the vote comes in. El pueblo pone, el pueblo saca. You got everybody into a vote and it's a yes or a no. And if you get voted in by everybody, then you're in. It was that simple. 
No beat downs and all of that shit. Then you got blessed in. Then you had to, of course, go to the Universal. Every 30th of the month, we have a grito. And everybody has to attend. Now, um, a lot of people have made up, you know, false or exaggerated stories about Joanna, La Madrina. And many other people, high-ranking members of the association. I personally knew a La Madrina. You know, I did security for her also. And uh, the way it went down, I mean, you know, of course, when it comes to the RICO Act, the feds had to make certain things stick. I knew Chalequito. I know everything that went down, but, you know, they had to exaggerate it a little. So, you know, you know... It was just all exaggerated. So, I mean. I also mentioned Manolo. Manolo was her ex-husband. He's dead now. You know, he died of HIV. He came from Puerto Rico with the Nieta concept. Along with El Diablo and Boy Santana. They brought that He was one of the originals. So. He passed it down to Joanna when he was dying. Since she was a woman. They didn't want a woman. You know, it, it's a big, it's a long story about that also. Which one day I could probably break it down about that, but you know, we have to keep it short. But anyway, um, where do we go? A lot of stuff was exaggerated to make the Rico law stick. She was a cool lady, not evil looking, a bit on the heavy side, but nice to me anyway. <laughs> um. And if you haven't seen my other Nieta video, you know, go check it out while we stop repping. It's just, you know, it's just story made up which the Fed used against everybody, you know. People always talking about the bad, never the good. Society doesn't want you to hear about the association, the group. That was a group with so much power to be anything else but a bad, um, a bad group. A gang, a bunch of homosexuals. I mean, they made up so much shit. I don't need this no more. They made up so much shit about the Nieta that people just stopped repping it. You know, they joined the Latin King. They became blood. I mean, so much shit was was done to ruin the name. And a lot of reason, you know, I said on my other video. But anyway, getting late. I hope this helps somebody out there. Hope it, you know, it was all true, bro. All right? Take this the way you want. Leave a comment if you want. Like if you want. If you don't like it, then fuck it. Whatever. Anyway, this is Say, a.k.a. Little Mario. This is the story about the Nieta of New York City. Y'all have a good one. De corazón. And y'all take care.